In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Canvas Photoshop action. What this action does, it will take your photo and transform it into something that looks like this. Okay, and it's essentially achieved with one click. Okay, so from that to that, uh, with basically just one click. Alright, so go ahead, open up your photo. Now, there's just a few things you need to check off just to make sure that the action runs smoothly and you get some good results. Just make sure that your uh, photo layer is set as the background. It needs to look like this. If you open up your photo and it doesn't have that background text with the lock symbol, just go to layer, new, background from layer, and it will set it as a background. Next, just go to the image menu, mode, make sure you're in RGB color mode, eight bits of channel is selected. And then if you go to image size, just make sure that you're working with a photo that's over a thousand pixels. Uh, just to prevent uh, any errors happening and you get much better results when working with high resolution photos. Find between a thousand to three thousand pixels high and wide is really good. Uh, also, up in the resolution to around 300 or 200 um, can really help with some of the clarity of the effects. So, uh, if you wanted to, say for example this was 72 dpi and I wanted it up it to 200 dpi, but keep the same pixel uh, size, I can just copy this number here, control C, type in a new number here, paste it back in, so now we have the same pixel dimensions but uh, a different resolution. Alright, so we just click, uh, or we'll leave that at 300, so I'll cancel that. Alright, so with that done, all we need to do to get this action to work is to create a new layer, call it brush, uh, it needs to be all in lowercase, just remember that. Uh, hit B on the keyboard, grab yourself a brush. Now you can experiment with using different shapes uh, for brushes, uh, but for for this example I'm just going to use a basic soft round brush. Select the colour, it doesn't matter what colour you pick. And you want to brush over your photo where you want to uh, apply the effect. Alright, so I've just uh, created one earlier. Where is it? Here, you can see I've brushed over my photo. It doesn't need to be as precise as this. Uh, I just quickly use the one tool because I had a white background to fill in my subject faster. All right, so with that done, we need to load up our action. So I'll go to the window menu, uh, select actions. The actions panel will pop up here. Next, just go to uh, this top right hand corner icon and select load actions and select the canvas.atn file. Select that and click play, and that's all you need to do. Now, this action does run for around five minutes. Uh, it has a lot of layers to build. There's a lot of um, flexibility to customize the layers when the action's done. So this action's essentially, you know, multiple actions in one because there's so many different looks you can create. Okay, so just jump back on the net, let it run, and come back in a, about five minutes time. But I'll fast forward the video, get to the result, and I'll talk about all the ways you can customize this. Alright, All right. so the action stopped, and here's what we have. Alright, so what I'm going to do now, we're going to jump to the layer panel, and I'm going to talk about all the different ways you can play around with this and customize the design. Alright, so uh, minimize the actions panel. Now, a quick way to collapse all these folders is if I hold down Control and Alt, and say click on this top adjustments folder, the arrow, control alt click, it will collapse all the folders so it'll quickly clean up um, the workspace. So on a um, Mac, that's command option, I believe, uh, to collapse all the folders. All right, so let's start from the top. Uh, let's go inside the adjustments folder. And so at the top here, we have the uh, initial area that we brushed. So you can see uh, it's applied all the effects within that area. And if you want to run the action again, just, you know, drag this one outside of the folder, delete these, and then run the action again. Alright, so I'll just undo that. Okay, layer below, before and after. This is just a good one to flick on and off to see uh, what you've created as you're working away. Alright. Now, the layer below, use original colour. By default, this is turned off because I've applied... Um, you know, a default color grade to this design. But if you turn this on, it will apply the original colors from the photo of the entire design. So no matter what um, adjustment layers or, you know, things you do underneath this layer, it's always going to 
use the original um, photo's colour. So keep that in mind, alright? So that's turned off by default. So lay it down, add contrast, that's turned off. Again by default, turn that on. Uh, it just adds a bit of contrast and what you can do if you click on uh, the word opacity and drag to left and right, you can adjust the amount of contrast there. So what I like to do is drag to zero and then slowly drag to the right, a bit something that you know, looks good. Alright, but this looks good with no contrast for the moment. Going down, add sharpening. This was just add a tiny little bit of sharpening to the area that we brushed. You can turn that one on or off, it's up to you. Going down, add vibrance. If you double click on this layer, you can play around with adjusting these handles here. Uh, adjust the vibrance, or you can adjust the saturation below. Uh, so, yep, that's that one. All right, going down, I've highlighted these two in green as this, these two layers are applying this default color grade uh, to your photo, okay? So if I turn these off, you can see what that's doing. All right, and the way this, these two work is if you double click on this one, you can adjust the saturation here, okay? And you can also drag this handle around to um, use a different color. All right, so by default, I've lowered the saturation down a bit. You can also play around with the brightness of this. Back to one. Down a bit. All right, and the layer below is another one to experiment with. You double click on this, click on this box. You can then change these um, color points. So you can pick a new color. Uh, say blue. Maybe a lighter blue. You can see how the colors are updating there. And then, you know, you can again use that handle to drag that around uh, some more. All right, so that's the adjustments folder. All right, moving on down, we have the canvas folder. So this one houses all the effects. All right, so we'll go inside and talk about what we can do here. So this top folder, sketch overlay, if I turn this one on and off, you can see what that's doing. That adds the uh, black lines over all the different contours of your photo. So if I move this folder out to the right, you can see it's overlapping all these lines here. All right, now you don't need to use that, you can turn that one off if you want and just have that more of that painted look, uh, but that's there to use. And what I like to do with this one is if uh, you wanted to say, make this more prominent, make the lines darker, you could select the folder, can go, con go control J to duplicate it. I could go control E to flatten all the layers within it. And so now we have another, uh, another set of lines we can overlay. And then you can adjust the opacity, start at zero, drag up to increase the, uh, the darkness of those lines, all right? Now inside the sketch overlay folder are different uh, layers that we can use. So we can move, you know, move these around. We could duplicate them, move them off subtly, uh, different directions, all right? So a lot of flexibility there. You can also use the folder mask. Uh, I might just draw this one side here to demonstrate this. So you can use this mask if you grab a black brush. Uh, select the folder mask, you can brush into it to erase uh, where you don't want those lines to appear. So maybe you just don't want it to appear there. Uh, and if you want to bring it back, you can just white, um, grab a white brush and brush them back in. All right, so that's the sketch overlay folder. Now the folder below by default is turned off. And if you turn it on, you can see it adds a, just a bunch of subtle details everywhere. So uh, I've called it add details. And if you go inside this folder, you'll see all these purple layers here um, make up this folder. So there's a lot of different layers you can experiment with here, move around, duplicate. Uh, so by default, this folder's opacity is also set to 50%. So again, you can drag this up and down, just that. And what I like to do, again, is start at zero and slowly drag off to the, to the right until you get something that you're happy with. And then what you can also do, for example, if I don't want, say if I turn this up to, you know, uh, up around here, 
and it's starting to distort his face. I don't want all that extra detail on his face. I can again select that folder mask, grab a black brush, and brush into it. So you can see now I'm removing all that detail uh, from the areas that I'm brushing here, but keeping it um, everywhere else. Now another thing to check out in the Add Details folder is by default this one's turned off as well, Sharp Mini. If I turn this one on, you can see what that's doing. It's really boosting up the clarity of all those details. Uh, so if you go inside this folder, we've got three different layers here, three different levels of sharpening. So I turn this three off. So click them on, go up the line here. Uh, you can see what that's doing. All right, so there's a couple more that are turned off, darken edges, you can turn these two on. These two here, if I just move these outside, just subtle little lines that uh, help build the effect. Uh, going on down here, we have all sorts of layers, paint splashes, you can move out to the side. Uh, you can, don't forget, you can duplicate them, rotate them, it's up to you. Uh, what else, we've got two uh, dots, you can turn these off if you don't want them. Duplicate them again to create more dots. Uh, moving on down, mix lines. Move this folder out to the side. There's a bunch of different lines again that are overlaid on the photo. Okay. Alright, so we'll keep going down. So that's that folder there. Now, so by default that was turned off. And so the one that's left on when the action's finished is the paint layer. So if I turn this one off, you can see what that's doing there. If you go inside the folder, we have all these different layers again, which you can, you know, you can turn a bunch off, experiment with um, different looks that way. Uh, you can, again, duplicate them, change the blend mode. Okay. So a heap you can do with these folders. Uh, another thing you can also do with these folders is change the entire folder blend mode. Oops. Okay, so you can just scroll through this, uh, all the different blend modes, create different looks that way. Alright, so I'll just turn this on and I'll just lower the opacity a bit. Okay, now the layer here, background sketch, uh, this photo isn't the best example to demonstrate this, so I've got another. Uh, another example here. Okay, so here's another photo I ran the action on. This was my original photo here. Uh, and what I did, I brushed over this guy here and I got this result. Now, to demonstrate this background sketch layer, I minimize these, if I turn these on, turn this on, you can see that it, it traces around all the background details. Uh, it's a really good subtle effect, so if I turn the original on, you can see what that's doing. All right, so if you have a photo with a lot of background details, uh, that's what that layer will be used for. And by default, the opacity is set to 50%, so you can adjust the opacity of that. Uh, you can blur it out, change the blend mode, create different effects that way. Now the original photo, this layer here by default is hidden by a mask. If I just invert this to make it visible, you can see that it, it reveals your original photo underneath all these folders above. So for example, if I, um, if I just revert this, oh, sorry. If I just invert, oh, I've done that. Okay, so if I don't want any of the canvas effects over his face, I just want the original photo, I can use this folder mask the canvas folder mask and start brushing black. All right, so I don't want any effects to appear there. But you can see what's happening. Uh, it's got nothing to fall down onto, okay? So what you can do then, with the original photo, I can grab a white brush and I can brush in where I want the original photo to appear. Just like that, okay? So you can use that technique uh, to reveal your original photo in different areas. Uh, so a lot of power in these folder masks. Alright, so I'll just hide that. Okay, going on down, the average image color, by default, um, this color, the way this layer works is that it picks the, the average color across your entire design and just 
fills it in as a background layer. So with each photo you run this action on, um, you'll get a different color. So you can just turn that one off if you don't want to use it. And then with this layer below, background color, you can just double click on this box and simply select a new color. Alright. So that's that. Okay, and you can also turn this one off to fall back onto your original photo. So you can see our background layer there. And if you turn this one off, you've got a transparent background. So, you know, I can go File, uh, Place, I can select a background, you know, and I can paste in a background, just like that. Alright, so that is essentially all there is to it. Um, you will get, hopefully you'll get a result that you're really happy with. Uh, when the action's finished, then you don't need to customize it much. But generally, playing around for with a f uh, for a few minutes, adjusting these uh, layers, duplicating them, rotating them, changing blend modes, you can really enhance the result quickly. Okay, so don't forget uh, that you can also go a step further with this. So if you create a new layer at the top, and you've got some cool brushes. So for example, here I've got couple of paint brushes uh, you can say if I select I I can sample this color here and I can brush you know to add additional effects so uh, so this one here I I'll sample say this color and you can see how you can start stacking um, some more effects all right and you can also Add some text. So create a new layer. Uh, add some white text. All right, and you can also track this down underneath all the layers, so it falls behind the effects like that. All right. Okay, so if you're happy with the design, you could then go ahead and whoops, and flatten the image. So I can go layer, uh, flatten image, like that. So now we have our design on one layer. Now I've also got a set of uh, 200 photo uh, looks to help grade your photo. So it's these two folders here, I've got a contrast and looks folder. So I can go inside here. And with the way these work, you just select one, click play, and apply a um, color grade to your photo. And it gives you two cut, two different layers. You've got a color layer uh, and a luminosity layer. And by default, they're both set to 50%. So you can you know, drag this to left and right to adjust the, the amount of color. Same with the luminosity. What I like to do is pick a color, uh, get that looking good, then I'll flatten it again, flatten the image. And then I'll go into my master looks, uh, sorry, my master contrast folder, and I like to use a HCR light. Play that. What that'll do is just add some really uh, nice sharpening to the design. So then again, you can adjust the uh, the opacity of that. And there we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to place the original photo. Okay, so you can see what we've done with hardly any work at all. So we've taken that photo, we brushed over where we wanted to apply the effect, click play, and we got we got that essentially. We just added a couple of extra brushes, some text, a bit of color, and we're done. All right. So I hope you have fun using this action. Uh, if you've got any issues with it, please contact me and I'll get back to you. Uh, but if not, have fun. All right, thanks.